for 2 Thessalonians. The first question, how much time passed between the first letter to the Thessalonians and the second letter? Less than a year. Less than a year for sure. Uh, many scholars believe as early as three to six months. So not much time at all passed between those. Uh, number two, why would Paul need to write to them again? Why a second letter? False teachers. False teachers had infiltrated and trying to persecution. confuse the people. Trying to confuse the people. The false teachers had come in and planted bat, you know, seeds that were not good. And <coughs> one last thing is they were still worried about the day of the Lord. They still did not have that clearly <coughs> in their minds. I wanted to just reiterate something that we talked about, but just to be clear, remember that they knew about the day of the Lord, but remember that they had a specific way that they believed that it was going to happen. And it did not appear that things were happening the way they thought that it was going to happen. It was a different plan unfolding, and it was not the way they thought it was going to happen. When I tell you when we talk about prophecy and I say, be at least prepared for the fact that we have a plan on how we think all of this is going to happen, at least be prepared for the fact that like every other time in the Bible, in the first coming of the Lord, in uh, all of these different areas, it did not unfold exactly the way everyone anticipated that it would. Please do not be surprised if that happens again. That, uh, that seems very reasonable to me. All right, number three, the which leaders? Jewish. Jewish leaders were still persecuting them. Why would they, the Jewish leaders, be so hostile to this group? Jealousy. Jealousy. Jealousy how? <clears throat> the Gentiles were being included. Gentiles were, part of, were now part of that special group. And they weren't having to follow no. some yeah. Dave's law. Okay, so the law, they were, they were interpreting the law differently than they the were being taught. Were, right. Okay. So they were going, um, saying that they were, you know, basically friends with God, but they weren't doing what the Jewish leaders were telling them to do in the minutia, so how could they be? Exactly. Exactly. So once again, the Jewish leaders had a plan and thought they knew exactly how it should be unfolding. Mm -hmm. And this was going upstream against that plan. And they could not accept that. So that, uh, that once again follows that whole plan of don't ever think you've got God's mind figured out. We don't think that way. All right. Um, number four, chapter two is a very important end time prophetic Letter. It appears that the people had heard all of this before because Paul tells them, I, I, I wrote to you about this previously. Remember when I was with you and I told you these things? But Paul felt it, was, it, was, it needed to be repeated for them. The people were very concerned that the day of the Lord had already come. So tell me what, you are, uh, uh, what we talked about last week. What did they already know about this event? Okay, and Messiah will come and usher in the kingdom, the messianic kingdom. Remember, Jesus is th all throughout the Gospels. What was the teaching? The kingdom. The kingdom was coming. The king, you know, John the Baptist. The king is coming. The kingdom is coming. And so the Messiah was to come and usher in the kingdom. They knew that. What else? Okay, so they knew about the teaching of Daniel and that sort of thing. They knew that this would be a time of tribulation and judgment. Mm -hmm. Judgment. They knew that this was going to be a time of judgment. However, uh, how they had skewed that particular teaching is that the judgment would primarily be upon those who persecuted them. Mm -hmm. So they weren't quite as concerned about the judgment they might face. But they were very concerned that the judgment come against those who had persecuted them. So they knew that that would come, and it would be a time when all the persecution and all the things that were going on, all of that would be set right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was, a, that was a very important time. So you can see that the Jewish interpretation of the tribulation and the Christian interpretation of it, the tribulation is, is different. Because we are taught 
that during that time of the tribulation, God's main focus, which is now upon the church, uh, primarily the growing of the, of the one new man, the Jew and Gentile together, this time of grace, the church age, uh, that we are taught that during this time, God's focus once again turns to the nation of Israel. Uh, many, many negative things happen to the Jewish people. In fact, very sadly, we are taught that there is a huge loss of life among the Jewish people. But there is also a time when God is coming to do exactly what we just talked about, where God is going to come and there will be judgment against those who stand against the Jewish people. God is not going to let anti-Semitism go on forever. He's not going to let that happen. It seems like it's gone on forever. It really does. But it's not going to go on forever. And there will be a time of accountability for that. But in the Jewish mindset, it's primarily more about how God is going to deliver them into this time when the wolf and the lamb laid together. In fact, that brings me to the point of, remember, we always say when the lion and the lamb... Uh, lay together, if you look at Isaiah, that's really not correct. It's never been the lion and the lamb will lay together in the messianic kingdom. It's always the wolf and the lamb. And that the lion will eat straw, will eat hay. And so that's just one of those things we perpetuate because we've heard it and we say it over and over again. <laughs> but anyway, they're looking forward to that time. They're looking forward to that time when all things will be set right for them. So they don't really look at it uh, as fearfully, I think, as maybe we do because we have the book of Revelation uh, where Jesus Christ gives his revelation of end times to John, and we know how devastating it's going to be. <clears throat> All right, so what must happen before the messianic kingdom comes? Period. We talked last week about the idea, sometimes we don't think about it, is that Jesus came to offer the kingdom primarily to the Jewish people first. Mm -hmm. Remember, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. And his, his, um, his uh, ministry was to the Jewish people. We know that. We recognize that after all that time we spent. Everyone nod with me. We recognize that <laughs> after all that time we spent. <laughs> and so... Um, we know that uh, the Old Testament prophecy talks about the time of Jacob's trouble, a time of devastation, and all of uh, that going on. And we talked last week about the idea that we sometimes don't think about, that if the Jewish people had all just in unison said, yes, Lord, you're the Messiah, the kingdom may come, what would have still had to have occurred? The tribulation, because that was in prophetic word. So even if that had happened, the tribulation would have still had to have occurred to follow prophecy. All right. Uh, how will Satan use this time? Receive who? Um, anybody who believes in God. There you go. Perfect. Trying to bring signs and wonders and distract from the truth. Okay. So we know that there is a, a trinity of God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We know that during the tribulation time that Satan will mimic that. There will be Satan, there will be the false prophet, and there will be the Antichrist. The three, the unholy trinity, you often hear it called. As he goes in and begins to mimic the things that God did to the point of signs and miracles and wonders and all of the things that he did. In fact, Revelation tells us that the Antichrist will be wounded. It appears that it's a head wound unto death and be brought back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so all of this is a mimic of what? The story, the gospel the story of what God has done as he begins to try and pull people away from that. And so he will be busy uh, attacking the Jews and trying to attain world dominion at that time. All right, seven. Once again, Paul will let them know that while they wait for these coming events, they should not be idle, idle or lazy, whatever you put. In fact, if they refuse to work, they should not eat. Okay, that seems good to me. All right. 
here we go. What are some of the things that tempt us when we have too much time on our hands, when we are idle and we don't fill ourselves up with the good things that God has for us? What are some of the temptations that fall our way? Gossip. 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 Busy bodies. Be idly disruptive. Okay. Too much of anything. Too much food. Excess. Too much TV. Excess. Mm -hmm. Busy bodies. Busy bodies. Fear. Depression. Fear. Oh. Depression. Good. Good. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All of those things, when we are not busy, can you think of one good thing that happens if you <clears throat> spend all your time laying on the couch? <laughs> one good thing, even one. Prayer. Okay. But then you're not being idle, are you? Because prayer is a work of God. Maybe you will rest. Okay. And do you know what happens if you spend too much time on your on your backside? You start getting start getting pains, and your sciatica kicks in, and your lower back, and your bed sores. The point being, you get my point, right? <laughs> the point being that God's direction is for our own good. Because nothing healthy happens when we're idle and lazy. And yet, if you look at being busy and active and, and involved, it keeps you mentally stimulated. It fills that emotional need that you have to connect with people. It spiritually feeds you when you're doing all of that. You're enthusiastic. You're excited about working for God. If you stay busy and you fall into bed at night exhausted from the work, is that a good thing? It really is, isn't it? You don't need melatonin. There you go. There you go. Number nine, the letter ends with Paul showing them something interesting. What is it that he shows them, and why would he do that? His own handwriting. That was that little example I put on there of Greek uh, handwriting. He, put, he says, this is my own handwriting. Look at it. Why? Why did he do that? To prove well, that he wrote it. To prove that he wrote that and? False prophets were using his name. Forging his name, weren't they? Uh-oh. Someone's phone over there. All right. I hear it. It's in a, it's in a purse. All right. Um, <laughs> all right, so because so that if they could recognize his own handwriting, then then they would recognize that when there was a forgery, that it was not from Paul because that was the issue. People were were not only teaching, they were writing letters and signing them Paul. And saying that these things were from Paul so that the people would listen to it. And so Paul had to have something to prove that that was not his. All right, and the last one, what event had happened in the early days of the church that showed that simply <coughs> sitting around waiting for the return of Jesus would not be productive or beneficial? They sold everything they had and while they waited. Okay. And so they had nothing. Okay, and who were those? People? The, Jerusalem. The, Jerusalem the Jerusalem saints, exactly. We've talked about that so many times, how Paul, uh, for the rest of his life, has to raise support for them so that they can survive um, because they had decided that they were just going to sit down and wait. And while they were sitting down and waiting, they were eating food and, you know, just kind of gathering, having a big giant potluck every day. And that's really good. Until pretty soon, nobody has a dish to bring, a side dish to bring. Yes. Sometimes the littlest thing you say is so impactful. That that to me was awesome because I, you know, in the in the interim, I've heard, you know, well, they sold their goods and they shared them, but, uh, but then it's like, but then they waited and had nothing. So sharing is good, but being diligent and you know preparing for the future is ultimate. So I, I thank you for the little tidbit. <laughs> Good. I'm glad, I'm glad that, that uh, you recognize God's teaching in that. All right. Good. So uh, how does that affect the way we behave today? I think Patty answered that beautifully. It affects the way we behave today because we don't want to be those people, mm -hmm. right? We don't want to be the people that someone has to take care of. 
That's, that's not good. Not if we're able to take care of ourselves and not, we cannot use the excuse of, oh, well, we're waiting for the Lord. I think I see a blood moon. Wait, no, no, wait. I think I see, uh, what's that going on? Is there something up in the stars that is happening? We can't do that. We can't sit around and wait. And yet, I see lots of people on the web pages that send me stuff every morning when I wake up. I see lots of people plucking out headlines of the day. This is it. This is it. Prepare. Get ready. I'm not sure how we prepare for that, but get ready. Prepare. Uh, because um, it, this is it. This sign that we're seeing right now, this is it. Just, we just want to avoid that at all costs. Kathy, there's an old, old, old statement <laughs> that you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of be where you are. Exactly. And if we're filling ourselves up with all the things that we just talked about, we're staying, we're serving, we're loving, we're involved, we're in ministry. Did you have something? Oh, no, you just have your pencil up in the air. I thought, are you trying to get my attention? <laughs> this is like when you're at an auction. If you hold your paddle up, uh, you just bid. Well, actually, since you called on me, okay. I was just thinking Marilyn has your mom. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all healed up on her lip that's all healed up and she went to the dentist and had her teeth fixed and in the process of that they found out she had a urinary infection and we've changed medicine so we're working on that and thank you we 